All right, everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt Bimondi. This is Wyatt Darby. Giving to kick off round five out of eight here in Indianapolis, Indiana. We've watched a lot of sweet stuff happen today. Uh, a lot of, like, more mid-rangey slash control slash um, combo decks. We haven't really watched any aggressive decks yet, though. Yeah, they definitely still exist. You know, um, it kind of we went from a format where that's all Pioneer was, you mm -hmm. know, red aggro, black aggro, green aggro. And, you know, they're around. Um, they're doing okay, but they're no longer a dominant force. Yep. But... Uh, we actually have been noticing a few red decks rise to the top in this tournament. Yeah. And we're actually going to have the chance to feature one um, in the hands of, is that uh, Dylan Husing? Yeah. going to be playing Mono Red yeah. against uh, Blue Black Inverter, which if you're going to be good against a deck, it really needs to be Inverter to have yeah. your deck be solid. And I think it's actually a pretty close matchup. Yeah, I watched a little bit of this in my off round. Uh, I also watched uh, Robert Litfin is playing Mono Red Aggro as well. Instead of um, Abbot of Carol Keep, he was mm -hmm. playing Eidolon at the Great Revel. And he got paired against Lotus, the Lotus combo deck, and I was like, oh, this is just the destruction. So, uh, yeah, I think the red deck could be good. Um, you you want to be lean. You and I talked about it a few minutes ago that you want to just be lean and lower to the ground. Um, I'll be interested to see what this matchup's like because the combo player, they have, the inverter player has, like, tools to win the game. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to be pretty quick. you got to have your combo, like, on turn six or else you're just going to get rolled over by this red deck. Yeah, I, I tested the matchup a lot uh, for this last player's tour, and it felt like if the inverter player has the card Inverter of Truce in their opening hand, you are a dog to win if they do anything yeah. else. Um, and otherwise, you know, mostly what you're looking for from the blue-black side is a handful of a couple removal spells and dig through time. Okay. If, if you can hit one of those two marks with your opener, you're in great shape. Sure. The problem is you don't know what your opponent's playing. You That's might right. keep discard spell, discard spell, thinking, like, well, it could be a mirror match and just get curved out because they have too many creatures. Sure. All right, well, it looks like they're getting ready to roll down there. I think somebody's taking a mulligan, but... We'll hop down and we'll get you started with round number five here. And uh, as Dylan is taking a mulligan down to six, I believe. All right. All right, we'll see who's on the play and as they'll get ready to roll. All right. There you go. All right. Nice little sportsman-like handshake before the start. Yeah, not bad. All right, so Dylan going to lead off on a mountain and Monster Swiss Beer. It actually seems like a hand that kind of has a lot of lands. Um, yeah. You know, the red deck does have lands that do things. You know, uh, Ramanap Ruins and Castle give you something to spend your man on, but yep. kind of low impact, all things considered. You know, if, if you're losing to Inverter, it's typically because they're at about 15 and not at 2. So uh, and here, actually, one of the most important cards, Fatal Push, uh, clearing Swiss Beer, keeping... Joshua's life total relatively high as he's going into the uh, mid part of the game. Yeah, and it looks like he actually has the, <laughs> the combo rolled up. He's got, uh, wow, so, and actually going to take Dylan's last card, which is Torban, which is pretty powerful. Just leaving him with Raminap Ruins, and uh, not a lot going on. Josh just needs a couple lands. He's got both pieces of the combo lined up, and uh, he's going to be in good shape. Yeah, this, this looks like an unusually bad draw um, from the red player yeah. side. You know, you, you mulligan, you don't want to go too low against a Thoughtseize deck, but um, just a Muta Vault and a Soulscar Mage, kind of woefully slow. Um, and yeah, all, all Joshua is trying to do is get his graveyard, you know, keep it as low as possible while being able, able to make the next two land drops. Yeah. And here we see at least a Fable Passage and a couple extra blue cantrips. So he might miss for a little bit, but I think Dylan's hand is going to give him the time to, to brick on land at least once or twice. Yeah, it looks like Dylan's cooperating, uh, and, and he finds, man, it looks like Bone Crusher Giant. So, I mean, not the worst all considered here. Let's see what a Bone Crusher, Josh. I'm going to trigger the prowess on that Soul Scar Mage. So a pretty decent hit. All right. I mean, Josh's already down to 10. It's It's not... Unreasonable that Dylan can still pick up a W here, but uh, definitely needs a little bit of help. Yeah, and you know, one, one piece of technology we might see in these post-board games is uh, threaten effects. You know, carries as expertise or harness by force, because the red deck can be pretty good at dealing the first 8 to 10 damage. Um, but once your opponent plays Inverter, they can kind of brick wall you. So being able to steal it, hit them with it, uh, can actually end the game before they can utilize the back half of their combo. Sure. All right, so... No, I actually think that, that was that was a brick, I think, from Joshua. He okay. Found, he found dig through time, so he has a way to look for the lands, but you know, it might be at the expense of being able to do anything else this turn. Yeah. Huh. All right, so he's going to go for that dig through time partner, just like you mentioned. Exile everything. Interesting way to exile your cards. <laughs> <laughs> Josh is going to take a look at seven new cards. Definitely is searching for lands here. Uh, looks like it. I mean, he's found several. A lot of hits. He's going to go through it and think about it. 
Still down to one card that Bone Crusher Giant is off on an adventure. And uh, he's got to find a way to buy two turns, basically, here. Yeah, and as it sits, this is actually going to be pretty tight because Dylan can attack for three on board, right, with the Mutavolt yep. and the Soul Scar Mage. And when you add the Bone Crusher in, Josh is going to be at seven the turn he casts his inverter. So, you know, that puts a lot of burn spells into, you know, kind of close to lethal, lethal range here. Yeah, it's pretty hairy. So, looks like Josh grabbed an island off that. Let's see what else he goes for. Maybe just kind of thinking about it for a second here. Pretty important turn, obviously. All right, so. All right. Going to take a pair of lands, looks like. All right, so Josh going to go ahead and play Drowned Catacomb. And again, he just needs to buy time here. Another Ramnap Ruins. Does that change the clock with another uh, a Swift Spear? Yeah, I, I don't think Swift Spear. Huh. Let's see. So it actually it makes it four damage, and it might be a little bit better with a burn spell draw. Sure. I, I kind of like playing Bone Crusher this turn yeah. to just open up some more mana flexibility on, on the follow-up turn. Because yeah. with the way you know Josh is going, he's going to have five lands in his next turn. There's no way you can be comboed from here. Right. So I kind of like taking a slightly longer approach and setting up to maximize damage over the course of the next two turns. Okay. Looks like there's two cards, and there's Inverter. All right, two cards left for Josh in his deck. Yep, yeah, dig through time and opt. So kind of dead. You know, everything that Josh is going to have to work with um, is already sitting in his hand. So at this point, it's just a question of, you know, Dylan putting <laughs> it to the test. Can Are you alive? Yeah. yeah. One last card there for Dylan. See what happens. Still jumping, thinking here. Yeah, and I guess you know, musing through what would kill Josh if there was a lightning strike in hands, um, you would have three two-power attackers. One gets blocked. So yeah, actually, lightning strike or shock should do it from here from Dylan. But I'll see if he has it. The card's been played pretty close to his chest. All right, so that's down. Josh going to go down to four. And there, yeah, I mean he's dead. Yeah, Jace has got it all. All right, so Josh Satterfield going to pick up game number one with a uh, pretty bad draw there for Dylan's deck. I mean, he just didn't really do much. I mean, and it was still pretty close, but, you know, he just kind of never got off the ground, really, and his first play died, and then he took a turn off, basically, and just wasn't wasn't fast enough, so... Yeah, definitely, so, um, I think it kind of showcases how close a matchup can be, because yeah. even, even despite you know, uh, how well Josh was able to kind of stymie it from the beginning, it was still a relatively close game. Yeah. You know, there were there were somewhere in the neighborhood of eight-ish top decks that could have ended it uh, for Dylan. So um, also interesting that Dylan has a couple Ember Cleaves. We didn't okay. See. So that, that's, a that's a pretty cool one. And yeah, just breaking down Dylan's sideboard here, um, a lot of regular suspects. There's three copies of Carry Zeb's Expertise, which I expect to be quite good here. Yeah. Uh, two Fry, three Scab Clan Berserker, three Damping Sphere, Plenty of hate for uh, Lotus Breach, yeah. as well as two Mizium Mortars and Chandra's Defeat. Interesting. So, honestly, I think the only cards that I would board in here are the Carry Zeb's Expertise and Scab Clan Berserker. Okay. Um, the Berserker dodging Fatal Push is, makes it pretty strong, and it just kind of, that Eidolon effect, uh, you're already punishing Cantripping pretty heavily yeah. when you beat down, but doubling down on that with Scab Clan um, kind of makes it impossible for, for Josh to do any, any filtering. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I, I like what you're talking about there. Uh, so, taking a peek here at Josh's deck. He's got an Aether Gust, a Cry of the Carnarium, two Damping Sphere, a Disfigure, two Kalidas, two Leyline of the Void, three Mystical Dispute, a Noxious Grasp, and two Narset Parter Vales. Uh, he's got some tools here. The Gust, the Cry, the Disfigure, and the Kalidas all seem pretty pretty reasonable. Uh, Kalidas is just a brick wall against this deck for the most part, uh, unless they're able to. Mizium Mortars is a card maybe Dylan's going to bring in, but but I, I'd be shocked if, if it comes in in, like, in big numbers. So... That card just kind of sticks around unless you get it in combat somehow, and, and most of the time you're just not going to. Yeah, especially, you know, Dylan's version uh, actually looks like it's playing Zero Chandra, the four mana Torch oh, of Defiance, yeah. which normally is, you know, how the red player will say, like, well, you might have a Cletus. I, I don't really want to board in a card that only deals with it, so I can hedge with this. Yeah. Um, but right now, the only way for Dylan to get a Cletus out of the way is maybe Rimrock Knight after or in the middle of combat, yeah. which is not ideal. Yeah. Or, you know, that could be another thing to steal with Carrier's Zep's sure. expertise. So. I think that Joshua doesn't have a ton of hate, which is fair. Um, I think in a perfect world, he doesn't really need a lot of it. So, yeah, um, yeah I think it's, it's going to continue to be close. But, yeah, Aether Gust and Cry, very powerful against the lower-to-the-ground red decks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's tough for Dylan. 
I mean, again, obviously, if, if he has, like, a very quick start, I mean, he's got, like, I mean, how many one-drops are in this deck? Uh, ten. ten. Looks like he's playing two Zergos. Okay. So he's got ten, ten one-drops, and he's got a pretty good pretty good handle on it. Goblin Rabble Master is also really tough uh, for these decks to beat. It just kind of floods the board, and it, it makes one-for-one one removal pretty bad. Yeah, and, you know, without um, any copies of cards like... You know, I don't think there's any Tyrant scoring in Joshua's list. No. So, you know, you have to do some real maneuvering with Fatal Push to, like, have a have a fetch land up sure. or, you know, tag it with Hero's Downfall. But, yeah, the combination of Goblin Rabbit Master and Torbrin is just a nightmare. Yeah. And there's not even any card, like, Sensor is actually surprisingly good against some of these <laughs> yeah. red decks yeah. when those cards you care about are three and four mana. And it looks like that's another one that I think yeah, he's omitted. Is, is yeah absent. So, yeah. you know, I think that... Josh is building his deck to more respect kind of the top end of the metagame, and that's that's fair, that's reasonable, but you're, you're not paying zero price for that, and, and we'll for see sure. if Dylan can kind of capitalize. For sure. Uh, have you played any of this modern red deck in standard, by the way, like with the <laughs> with Anax and all those guys? Yeah, An Anax Embercleave is, is it's legit. Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's really fun. I, it's, it's kind of unbelievable to me that the card that would reinvigorate red is just like the rando uncommon, yeah. you know, when there's when there's stuff like Torben and Embercleave already yeah. existing, but... Yeah, I think it's I think it's sweet. Um, I think whenever red, red is a good deck in standard, I'm going to be pretty happy. Yeah, me too. Like you get to do some cool stuff with you mentioned Anax and Amber Embercleave. Uh, if they kill it too, like you just have you just get to play uh, four of the what's the land called the um, oh uh, the castle Amber Castle Amberath. Yeah. You get to play four castles. So once they've wrathed you, you like Anax is like all right. Here's like five dudes, and you get to attack with the castle. It's pretty sweet. So let's talk about uh, some of the trials that are coming up here. Obviously today. We are playing Pioneer. Uh, tomorrow we're going to play some modern action if you're interested in that. You see CTQs. Those are also available if you're interested uh, in, in a couple weeks here. There's February 29th. There's a 1K Pioneer in Cedar Rapids, Iowa by OCM and First Turn Games. Uh, and then March 28th, 1500, Team Constructed in Des Moines, Iowa, hosted by OCM also. And uh, there's a bunch of points at stake. Uh, big chunks of points, though, come from our trials. So, obviously, today we are playing Pioneer. Tomorrow I'll be playing some Modern, which is awesome. You can see down there March 21st and 22nd, Team Constructed, Pioneer, Modern, and Legacy, if you're interested in that. We're going to be in Milwaukee for that. And then you can look forward to our showdown after that, too, which is April. It's uh, one of our $15,000 weekends, actually. There's a $10,000 showdown. Winner qualifies for our end-of-the-year championship, playing Modern on that Saturday. Uh, if you didn't like your deck, you want to make a few adjustments, you can play more Modern on Sunday for 5000 bucks. We'll be in Naperville, Illinois. Remember, mark your calendar April 4th and 5th. 15000 bucks is a lot of money. Yeah, at $15,000 and Players Tour invites yeah. and Championship. It, like, winning that tournament has... Big time. Yeah, the, the, the value in that's kind of absurd. And I think it's, you know, Modern's in a pretty interesting place right now. The format feels... A, Almost as powerful as I can remember, yeah. you know, even even though we don't have any Hogax or Urza's floating <laughs> around. Turns out there's a little 2-4 Prismatic Omen that's uh, doing some yeah. dirtiness to the format right now. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and that deck is really sweet, by the way. I'm interested to see what tomorrow is. Again, if you if you're have to step away from today or something like that, tomorrow we will be casting uh, our, our Modern Trial as well. So be sure to check that out if that's more your flavor. But, uh, yeah, Modern is really powerful. Primeval Titan is a messed up magic card. Has been for a long time. Yeah, it's, it's everything that I've always wanted Sun Titan to be, actually, is how it turns <laughs> out. It's, apparently, bringing back a, like, 2-2 two, two for 2 is not uh, not quite good. But, yeah, here we see uh, our players have resolved some mulligans. Dylan, all the way down to five cards. Now, Red is a deck that doesn't need a ton, but it is kind of a critical mass deck, and we see a couple three drops in his hand, so we're going to need to run some lands together, and looks like a brick to start here. Yeah. Josh has another copy of Goblin Rabble Master. Going to send it back to Josh. And Josh has Josh has that Kalidus in hand. He's just going to look for some lands. To get there. All right, so found a fabled passage. Yeah, Josh is firing on all cylinders here. He's got second land rolled up. He's got all four lands rolled up, more cantrips, and he's got that Kalidus. So, all right, well, Dylan finds a land here. Looks like carries up his expertise is actually in Dylan's hand as well. Yeah, really good to kind of hammer inverter, but. You know, it doesn't really help you do anything until then. Yeah. And in a situation like this when you're already low on cards, it's kind of a it's a hopeful, you know, card to have in hand. And you know, I think the the craziest thing about this inverter deck is, you know, Josh has a Thassa's Oracle that he could play that I actually just do, would do like a pretty incredible job like blocking. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. It's funny, uh I think Joe mentioned that the team Peppa Pig from the players tour was playing a third a fourth Thassa's Oracle in the sideboard for their modern red matchup. Yeah, which is hilarious. Imagine 
playing mono black aggro with your like I don't know sixteen two ones <laughs> and having your opponent just their combo piece is also just an impenetrable wall. It's right. Like All right. All right. So Dylan, Dylan ends up hitting the third uh, land and going to play Goblin Rabbit Master. He's got a second one in hand too, and these guys stack up really well together. Yeah, and actually, you know, uh, Josh has a Fable Passage in hand, kind of punished for not playing that um, because we see Fatal Push taking out instead Zergo. So um, I'm not sure if it'll end up being of consequence in the entire match because we were going to slam a really powerful four drop. Looks like Inverter. Yeah, so Dylan is under the gun. Uh, two cards left, and Josh is threatening a combo kill just next turn with the Oracle that he's been sandbagging. Yeah, so Dylan's going to be in some trouble here. Uh, don't think he's much long for this world. And there's an actual carry there. There's expertise. Oh, oh does uh, he got him? Well, Rabble Master, you actually can't cast it. It's two or less. So I want to make sure we don't go too far. Okay, from okay. That. Yeah, we'll pause them here. We'll stop them here. We'll try and get them stopped here. We'll get... Yeah, we'll get them to figure it out. So we'll make sure. I'm sure Wyatt's right. He played the card. You played the card at the at the player store, right? I played Harness by Force, but we tested it a bit with Kerry Zev's expertise. Okay. Yeah, so they're yeah. Pretty, let's bring up similar, let's so. bring up Kerry Zev's expertise when we get a second as well as Jack brings us back to the uh, booth. He's working hard trying to get them to stop the game there. So let's check yeah. out Kerry Zev's expertise. Yeah, Wyatt's Wyatt's right. Look at that. Go figure. Yeah, I mean, look. If I I don't claim to know very much. <laughs> But just give me my red cards, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it's, it's a threatened effect with, uh, you know, most cards when you add, you get something for free back. They end up being pretty good. Uh, and red is pretty well equipped to take care of it. So a bit of an awkward situation. Uh, we have a crack team of judges, though, so we'll have them sort that one out for us best they can. And um, Yeah, it's actually... Is our ba I wonder if our backup match is... Is our backup match... Let's, let's see. Jack, is our backup match available to watch? Okay, let's do that. Let's do let's do that. So we'll we'll just switch the backup. When we figure out what happened in our main feature match, we'll let everybody know at home. Um, it's gonna I assume it's gonna take a little bit of time to get that one solved. So we'll jump down into some more magic because that's what I wanna do. Jack's gonna or we put Jack under a lot of pressure to, to put the game on, so we'll give him a few seconds. Um, uh, we'll talk about the games that we did get to watch though. Uh, the mono red deck looked like it, it can come out pretty hot in order to get through. Um, but you mentioned if they have inverter on four, it's like, all right, well, how do I how do I win from here? And you saw, Josh was going to win that game, I think, mm -hmm. um, and he played inverter on four, and was just like, all right, like do do your worst. Yeah, you know, there wasn't really much interaction before that point, but as long as you do something, whether it's whether it's a fatal push or a, even a discard spell, you can just pick apart red enough to deny a turn four kill. Okay. Let's see what we got. So, okay, so. So what happened is, is both players, since they'd already picked up their cards, uh, they just agreed that they're just going to play a third game. So I guess Josh must have conceded and said, "Okay, that's it." Uh, so <laughs> we're going to play a we're going to play a game number three here. So so we'll play game number three here, and it's uh, so you're going to have Josh is going to be on the play for game number three with the inverter deck. Uh, hard to hard to argue that his his game two hand could get much better though. Yeah, ha having access to, you know, there, there was an option for Kalidus if he was under a little bit uh, more duress even. So, yeah, he kind of had a lot of flexibility. You know, we saw um, take opting to take a little bit more damage instead of playing fast as Oracle because he wanted to maintain his combo potential. Just a lot of play from the inverter side. And, yeah, it doesn't take, again, now that he knows what he's playing, I think it's really easy to use a London Mulligan to just get, like, a good six-card hand that has all the tools you need. Sure. All right, well, we're going to jump down there here in just a second. Uh, again, thanks for hanging out with us. Today we're playing... Pioneer currently. We're going to be playing some Modern tomorrow. Uh, if you want to check us out on our social media, you can check us out Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Instagram.com slash NRG series. Or you can find us at NerdRageGaming.com if you're looking for deck lists, upcoming events, all that good stuff. Alright, sounds like we're going to jump back down here as these guys are almost ready for a third deciding game here. Yeah, I, I don't know. This Inverter deck is what I would have played for the tournament. Um, I know you played Mono Red at the Players Tour. Joe played the Breach deck. Would you have played Mono Red again or something else? Um, I think I probably would have played Inverter. I, you know, the versions that played some copies of Narset and yeah. like seven to eight discard spells, I feel like those are actually super well positioned. And you also have access to, you know, just being able to 
load up your sideboard with removal spells and have a pretty solid chance post-board against any beatdown deck that's still floating around. So, yeah, I think Inverter's a great deck. Um, I love the kind of flexibility that you can pivot into a controlled sh uh, shell sometimes. And, you know, I, I think red's good, but it's just... It's a little bit underpowered, I think, compared to the rest of the field. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, I mean, man, there's just so much. The Inverter deck and the, the Lotus Breach deck, it's just... They're so powerful. The cards, I mean, all together are just such strong decks. So I don't know. I don't know if I could get behind playing playing mono red or mono white, which we have on a backup feature match right now. I don't. I don't know. I I'd have to see what the mono white deck looks you're like. You're gonna talk smack to mono white. Yeah. The deck won 38 percent of its matches over the last two pro tours. Wow, that is staggeringly 38%? good. percent. <laughs> you're almost a coin flip when you sit down at the table. That's pretty good. Uh, honestly, that's good. All right. All right. So Josh looks like taking a mulligan here. Oh, that's funny. 38%. Wow, that's that's strong. I'm going to grab the deck list for the other match here, and I want to see, because I want to see what these are. I We have, like, 25 minutes left in the round. I assume we're going to be able to get to uh, the backup match, so I want to just be prepared to see how uh, what interesting things we get to see. Yeah, it looks like we have a pretty pretty functional uh, double mulligan here from Josh. He does still have the key inverter. Um, looks huh. like cantrips and functional lands up the way. So okay. it's going to be a question of, I think, for Josh, can he find the tools to defend himself, you know, pre-turn four? Sure. All right, so they're going to get started here. And uh, looks like it looks like four lands in Dylan's hand. Yeah, four lands, I think double three drop with both Anax and Rabble Master. Yeah. So, you know, you really do want to get the beatdown started before turn three. Um, and that's going to make, you know, any uh, prowess creature from Dylan, any any carries of some of the best draws in his deck right now. Okay. And there's a Wild Slash. I think Dylan has Wild Slash and Lightning Strike in hand. All right. So Choked Estuary comes in. And there's a Wild Slash at end step. I'm going to put Josh down to 18. Yeah. You know, here you can see kind of just how underwhelming these burn spells are against yeah. Inverter. You know, until until they're actually killing your opponent, they just don't really don't really translate to, to much that, that's meaningful. So, yeah, I, th I think if you're Josh, you know, seeing your opponent say, shock you go, you know, strike you go. Yeah. It, I mean, good you almost enough. couldn't draw it up much better <laughs> than that. Yeah, I mean, that's good, great for Josh. And he's got – is that double Inverter – and I can't, uh, is that I think a it's dig? Inverter push dig. Oh, so wow. he doesn't have the blue combo piece, which is a problem, but he does have a lot more of that effect. Okay. Um, and you know, it is possible that some of the uh, four mana Jaces, the Wielder of Mystery, has got shaved in, in cyborging. Sure. But, you All know, right. Anax is yeah. eh, not that big of a clock. It's not, not very good on its own. All right, so you see Annex hardened in the forge. So one red red, it's star three. Its power is equal to the devotion to red, and it's currently two. Uh, whenever Annex, <coughs> excuse me, or another non-token creature you control dies, create a one-one red satyr creature on the token with this creature can't block. And then the extra clause, if the creature had four or greater uh, power, you get to create two tokens instead. So pretty strong altogether. Wow, Ether Gust is going to be Pretty good for this Anax, and you mentioned he has a Fatal Push in hand as well. So, uh, Yeah, and we see Dylan really just standing pat. He's had Goblin Rider Master for the last two turns and opted yeah. first to play Anax, and then here to actually just hold it entirely. I think that has to be out of fear of Cry of the Carnarium in particular. Sure. And it's just tough. You know, even though your opponent's on a mulligan, you just don't have that luxury to kind of wait. All right, well, there's uh, <laughs> Kalidus off the top there for Josh, and well, that's a pretty decent start with the Soul Scar Mage, uh, and there's a Lightning Strike in hand for Dylan as well. So that's pretty nice. Gets to shrink it down. That, that's that's a pretty nice turn, all things considered. There for Dylan. Yeah, just straight up ate the Kalidus, and it's actually incredible to me how good Soul Scar Mage is. You yeah. know, it, it was like a, a kind of a curve filler and its standard red deck, but here you can see the uh, it's a prowess one two for a single red, and it's got the ability to kind of turn burn spells into shrinking effects without sure. killing a creature. And, yeah. you know, typically that's one of the best ways to beat red, just go over the top with stuff like Steel Leaf Champion or Kalidus. And, you know, when you can trade a Lightning Strike or a Shock for their 4-drop, I mean, that's just a fantastic exchange. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. It's it, it's pretty, like, under under um, underappreciated, I would say, as, as a 1-drop, but it's, it's definitely a good card. Yeah, and here we see Josh finally had enough stuff in his graveyard to cast Dig, and it hit... 
Thass is Oracle. Yeah. So combo is on lock. Um, all he needs to do is find himself a sixth land, and he can play both parts in the same turn and hope that, you know, as long as Dylan doesn't top deck a lightning strike to kill my, my Thass's Oracle, um, we can add this next turn. And yeah. if your opponents, you know, if, if they're hellbent, if they're, you know, if they are just top decking, I think it's fine to, to go for the kill just yeah. immediately. I'm with you. So Josh looks like takes a land in the Thass's Oracle, I think. Uh, yeah, so he has the... Uh, he has that six land wrapped up. Yeah, and I mean, he's going to know the coast is clear now because Dylan's going to play out his haste monster Swiss spear. And uh, I think that's just for seven, nine total. Yeah, and he's, I mean, he's got him. He's got the combo in hand. All three of those cards, there's the six land, play, pays four for the inverter. Uh, so the way it works, just so everybody knows, uh, Josh would play that fourth land, six land out, excuse me. He'd play the inverter. Uh, he'd have, I believe, one card in his graveyard at the time was is that dig through time. That now becomes his library. And then Thassa's Oracle. Uh, let's bring Thassa's Oracle up on the screen real quick because I don't know if we've seen the seen the comma necessarily. So Inverter of Truth will turn your library will be exiled and your graveyard will become your library. So then he would only have that one dig through time left in his library. Uh, and then we're going to bring Thassa's Oracle up on the screen here in just one second. So you can see Thassa's Oracle for blue, blue. It's a 1-3. Uh, enters the battlefield. Look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. So in this case, would have been two. Uh, put one of them on top of your library and the rest in the bottom. In a random order, if X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you are the winner of the game. So Josh would have won the game that turn. So... Uh, it's just a fantastic combo. Yeah, tidy, clean. You know, it's one of those things where I think it's just, um, it's really cool when stuff like this pops up. You know, yeah. it's it's one. Of, I'm actually personally pretty glad that Pioneer is kind of, I, I think a combo deck like this is, is fantastic. It, yeah. It's kind of got some Splinter 20 feelings. And um, yeah, you know, I, it's just nice when control decks can have a way to end the game. And, you know, yeah. it, it works pretty tightly there. People's brains work in ways mine don't. Like, I would never have found this combo. You could have handed me, like, these cards out of, like, I don't, I don't know what this is, and I would never I would never have found this combo like just by putting cards together myself. So it's cool that it exists. Uh, I totally agree with you. It's it's interesting. So at any rate, uh, Josh going to pick up a W, and we're going to look at our backup match. So here's this mono white deck. Caleb Ooh. Spicer is playing against Sam Copperwicks, who's playing. It looks like the blue red, um, like the artifacts. The, uh, yeah, the deck, yeah. deck. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, interesting white list from Caleb. Um, not really devotion it's more beatdown. i i'm yeah. noticing i don't know exactly how many one drops but it's getting pretty close to 20 you know okay. it's doing uh boros elite things mardu woe reaper all right Benelish marshall so it's kind of the humans beatdown deck um and Sweet. yeah i think it's it's going to be interesting playing against kind of a pseudo aggro meter <laughs> here against in all right so sam is it looks like we're on the opposite sides of each other so that's mardu woe reaper there they are uh Sam, how many cards do you think Sam's going to have to read? Several? Uh, I'm going to guess at least four. Okay. I think it would be reasonable. All right. So there's Tomic. That's a good one. People should know what that is if they played Standard recently. Yeah, and actually, you know, worth noting, pretty good hate piece uh, against the Breach decks. And, yeah. You know, um, not not a bad start from our Is It In Soul player either. Having Ginger Brute plus Ghost Fire Blade all of a sudden does size up his creature pretty well yeah. uh, against what the white deck can pr present, but kind of opting to race, you know, understanding that there's a lot of ways that my opponent could pump their stuff, and, you know, actually one thing that I, I would like to talk about, uh, Caleb's deck features four copies of Brave the Elements. Okay. Not very good uh, against the, the colorless beatdown yeah. deck in a lot of situations. That's fair. You see Serpent <clears throat> hitting the battlefield here. Stone Coil Serpent comes in as a 3-3. Three, three. And uh, Caleb has to pump the brakes. Yeah, pretty surprising that there's nothing to spend four mana on. Um, just kind of indication of just a hand really thin on action. Yeah. Because um, any two one you would play out and yeah, might just be waiting to, to crack that Shepherd Dunes. And, and that, that would kind of push a lot of Caleb's creatures up into the range of at least trading. Yeah. All right, here's another Ghost Fire Blade. All right. Ginger Root coming in. Huh. All right. Well, Sam looks like pretty far ahead here. Yeah, you mentioned like I don't know what you would. All that mana. There's there's four mana available. And nothing to do now. Caleb does hit a Benelish Marshal, which makes everything a lot larger here, and he's able to swing in and try and trade here. Yeah. Saw so, so a handful of planes, um, and you know instead of cracking 
Chef of Dunes to get this pump and Lush Marshall a much more efficient way to do it. And yeah, yeah I think right now, um, attacking with everything is a little bit rough, you know, because you might want to leave something back to trade with a Stone Coil sure. Serpent. It's just the, the Ginger Brute, you know, you have no way to block it. Yeah. So it kind of forces the game on an accelerated timeline. And, you know, these Izzet and Soul decks, they've got Shrapnel Blast. So, you know, yeah. once you're below 10, you're kind of in the danger zone. That's true. All right, so Caleb thinking about his attacks. He's going to go ahead. Looks like he's thinking about firing in with the Dauntless Bodyguard, but uh, decides not to, it looks like, maybe. All right, so I'm going to block the Martyr Royal Reaper and trade him off. All right. Sam has, looks like another Stone Coil Serpent in hand. Yeah, Stone Cold Serpent picked up Wild Slash, which is actually pretty reasonable. It can yeah. still tag that uh, leftover bodyguard. And, you know, in the situation where Samuel does take the trade with Stone Coil, the, the bodyguard on defense looks a little bit on the silly side, you know, yeah. against Ginger Brute. But it's tough. You just kind of have to give yourself the, the option to block. All right, there's Stone Coil. And yeah, pr pretty conservative play. Instead of opting for massive Stone Coil, uh, Sam's giving himself the, the flexibility to animate Mutavault and also Wild Slash. Yeah. Um, I think just a really good recognition of, I don't think my opponent can deal with this Ginger Brute, and I just need to not die. All right, and yeah, he's going to pick up game number one over Caleb Spicer's Mono White deck. Uh, I'm going to take a peek here at Sam's sideboard partner. So we got one Aether Sphere Harvester, a Shadow Spear, three Metallic Rebuke, three Mystical Dispute, two Damping Sphere, a Lava Coil, and three Aether Gust. I don't know that I love anything here, but, like, there's some things that are okay. Like, Harvester's probably fine. Um, Lava Coil, also probably good enough. Um, Shadow Spear is interesting because it can swing the race. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I suspect it's probably good enough. Um, depending on exactly what this is in Soul main deck looks like, I'm guessing there's a couple of Summon Denials that probably yeah. need to go. So, you know, if anything you can do that, if I can swap Counter Magic with stuff that says Lifelink on it, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Um, even if it might be a, a little bit on the maybe kind of inefficient side sometimes okay. for these. What do you got on Caleb's uh, Caleb side? Uh, lots of uh, one-offs to start. We have Deafening uh, Silence, Damping Sphere, Fragmentize, Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, Gideon's Intervention, uh, and a one authority of the consoles to go with two ofs of Glare of Heresy, Fiend Slayer Paladin, oh. Rip, and Knight of Grace. Okay. Um, I mean, Fragmentize pops out, but yeah. beyond that, I'm not really seeing not anything. All right. Well, let's jump down there for game number two. So let's see what they got. Is Glare of Heresy, is that exiling another? It's uh, a, white a white card? card yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Was a, a big player in some of the uh, Abzan, you see right. Rhino Mirror matches yeah, back yeah. in the day? That's right. That's Unfortunately, right. not much of that anymore. Feels bad. Someone's got a, like, Niv Mizzet can see Rhino, so now no one can play it. New, yeah, really excellent start from uh, from Samuel. The turn two scissors on Stone Cold Serpent, but. Declaration in Stone? That's pretty clean, yeah. When's the last time you saw that card? It's uh, kind of been a while, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, Bank Company standard. And, you know, it yeah. does give your opponent a clue. They do get some value left over, but one of the best ways to mitigate that is by putting the game on the clock and <laughs> making sure they can never actually have the time to grab Yeah, it. for sure. Yeah, wow. Damp uh, declaration in stone. That's that's interesting. That's nice, though, man. That that really worked out. How many are in those? In his, they're in his main deck. Three, it looks like, huh? Yeah, kind of the, the go-to interaction. You know, Caleb doesn't play many spells. It's mostly just the Brave, the Elements, uh, and, and those Deccan Stones, but... Wow, Thalia's lieutenant. Here we go. All right, so you see Declaration is still in there. Two mana exile target creature uh, and all other creatures with the same name as that creature. Player investigates for each non-token. Uh, investigates not on this card. Uh, for some reason, the reminder text is not on there. Uh, but it, gets, it gives them a clue, basically, is what it does. So. Okay. And do love the uh, the Declaration in Stone did give Samuel uh, an artifact, which he could use to have that Spire make red mana, <laughs> yeah. turning on a Wild Slash, so... And yeah, that it's just <laughs> it's just that too fast. Right. Kilo had a great great uh, aggro draw and exactly one removal spell. And yeah. you know, if your opponent like this isn't in soul deck is kind of an A plus B aggro deck. It, yeah. It's kind of synergy. And if you can get that that clean two for one, you wiped out their first two turns, and you've also made seven power. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Pretty easy recipe. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. yeah, it was just really fast. And Caleb had the the declaration stone, which was obviously quite important. Um. Yeah. Just kind of just ran them down. I mean. I don't think anything else is going to change, and Sam really needs he really needs these these removal spells, or he needs like hangerback walkers are probably a good good start too. So we'll see where uh, game number three takes us. Yeah, I don't think too much is going to change on the play draw. Uh, I just think it's going to be these players trying to find the best clock they can with enough interaction to try and swing the race. Sure. All right, so we'll hop down there for our third and final game. Sam Kepperwick's going to be 
on the play here, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. This model white aggro deck is kind of hilarious, actually. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's a really pretty, like, clever way to use Salia's Lieutenant. I mean, yeah. the fact that I mean, it's one of the more powerful lords in Pioneer, you know, yeah. you, you see um, a lot of people kind of disparaging white, but there's, there are some fine cards here. All right, there we go. So we got us swapped over. A couple things that happened. So there's an insult. So Jax is going to start it over. Let's, let's see, if, let's see if, if he can make it happen. All right, here we go. So turn one, Ginger Brute from Sam Copperwicks. Comes attacking in, and then uh, Caleb leads off on Authority of the Councils. All right. That's a good one. That one's cool. Yeah, you know, pretty... Pretty solid card. Um, the TLDR is your opponent's creatures coming to play tapped, and whenever your opponent plays a creature, you gain one life. Yep. So, yeah, a really great way to fight, uh, you know, haste from the opponent. And, you know, it's interesting. Sam can add so much power to the board by casting uh, in Soul Artifact that he kind of gets to dodge a lot of the downside yeah. of the card. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Authority was like a card I played back in the day with... Um Approach of the Second Sun, if you remember that deck at all in Standard. Yeah, yeah. So played, like, Authority was in there, Approach of the Second Sun. There was, like, Regal Caracal, so you could, like, live forever. It was, it was kind of funny. Yeah, and Sam actually deploys an Aethersphere Harvester, which uh, doesn't get hit by the Authority either. Yeah, and, you, you know, it also wears in Soul Artifact very nicely. Yeah. Uh, I, I suspect that might happen. Um, it's going to allow Sam to attack for 10, five of it being lifelink, and I guess all of it being unblockable with Ginger Brute. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, well, Caleb's dead next turn. <laughs> so you see Aetherfear Harvester come cracking in there. And, uh, I, I mean, I don't think Caleb's at four now. I don't know if he has a, really a chance other than, like, having a double removal spell or atomic, I suppose. And uh, Caleb packs him up. Yeah, three games, uh, ten turns. And, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's Aggro and Pioneer. These decks are these decks are fast. Yeah, that was something else. Uh, so Sam Carbrook's going to get to five and oh. Caleb Spicer at four and one. <laughs> That was blistering. That those games were fast. That was good. Um, I, I mean, so this this deck this deck list that Sam's playing, you don't see a ton of it anymore. It was like one of the first decks that I think the Insole deck was like one of the first ones that everyone's like, we gotta play this deck in Pioneer. Um, I don't know. It's still good enough to win games, obviously. Yeah, it's been really getting cleaned up over time. You're seeing, you know, the first iterations of the list had stuff like. I don't know, Ornithopter, yeah. Springleaf Drum. You're kind of cutting that chaff. You're getting a little bit more lean and aggressive. And I think they're actually ending up in a good spot. It seems yeah. like a good deck to fight combo. You know, you can you can have a turn four clock and a counterspell or two. And yeah. that's kind of the recipe you need, I think. Definitely. Uh, Caleb's deck is interesting, obviously. Um, just just kind of just a smattering of white one drops, kind of dodging. You want to dodge, like, Cry of the Carnarium especially. Uh, if you think people have, like, trimmed on that card, which most of these inverter decks that we've seen today have, have like, one copy maximum. So if you think you can dodge it, it's probably good enough to just keep playing. Yeah, and I mean, I think that, you know, the deck isn't particularly powerful. I don't think yeah. we can really say it is. But, you know, there's something about having triple one drop into pump effect that's, that's yeah. going to win you some games. Sure. And, you know, the spite deck, it, it seems reasonable. You know, Brave the Elements is going to make you kind of a house in matchups where creature combat matters. Yeah. And I think that uh, you can, you know, you can lean on that and you can lean on your, again, probably turn four goldfish against the rest of the format. Sure. All right, well, we're going to take a short break here. We're going to wrap up round number five here. So we'll jump in for round number six here in just a few minutes. Probably got about five or ten minutes left in the round here, but we'll bring you some more Pioneer action here from Indianapolis in just a few.